<laughs> What's going on, y'all? What's up? What's good? What's good? I like your hat. Thank you. Yeah. Well, what's a little vibe? Welcome to the show. Let's get into your intro. So, um, you ever had a dream but afraid to step out on faith? Well, this guest did just that after leaving his career in corporate America to invest his time and energy into his passion of event planning and coordinating productions for all types of events. Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary alike, welcome to the Pink Clubhouse, the CEO and founder of Sullivan Event Productions, Dwayne Sullivan. Hey, that was dope, bro. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> well, Jeez. So I'm happy that you are here. Dwayne, for uh, those that may not know, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your company, Sullivan Event Productions? Yeah, definitely. So hello, everyone. I am Dwayne Sullivan out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I am an event coordinator slash planner and designer um, based, again, out of Charlotte, North Carolina, originally from Florida. And um, I have the privilege to help get my clients execute events of their dreams to a higher magnitude um, and excel their expectations in each way. Okay, okay awesome. Okay. So... Um, Dwayne, after years of working in corporate America, you made the choice to fully step out um, on complete faith and give 100% of your time to your business. And on October 28th of this year, you celebrated your full-time launch amongst family and friends and supporters. Um, what made you decide that this was the route you wanted to take for your life and why now? Man, honestly, it was an opportunity that I've been praying for for a long time. I'm, I'm a big believer in faith. And so for me, this was, it came at a pivotal time. So early this year, I was in a position in my life where I was just like, God, like, you got to open up a different door. I need something more. Something else has to happen um, in this season. Um, I almost got fired twice this year from that job, right? Um, and then found out that they were going to be laying us off in June. And I was like, okay, cool. But this is like, hold on, I don't have a job. Like, what's happening here? Um, but I was like, I own a business and this is what I've been praying for. And so for me, it was like, I'm leaving with the bag to pursue my dream and my passion. And so I just decided to take that leap of faith and walk out in it and on it and say, God, I'm trusting you in this season. I'm moving with you. And I want to see what my prayers look like answered. So that's why I am. Did you have like, cause you know, some people have that moment where they are released from a job. Did you have people who were like behind you pushing that into you to try to help you get to that point? Yeah, definitely. My family, my friends have been very supportive. I am thankful for that. Uh, to have a network of people who literally trust in my vision, who have carried me through everything. Mm -hmm. um, the one blessing that I've been able to tell people recently was the fact that I've never had a new client. I've been able to sustain my business off of my family and friends hiring me to do their events. Uh, so I've never had the luxury of having someone step out of their comfort zone and say, Hey, I want to book you. I don't know you, but I've heard a lot about you or whatever. But so I've never had that moment. So over the last couple of years that I've been able to do events, it's been based on family and friends who have encouraged me, who give me the leg up, who's put money into my business each and every time to say, Hey, I trust in your vision. I trust in you. I trust in what you do. And I want you to own this for me. Um, and that has given me the the audacity in this season to say, I'm here and this is my right. season. Now, can I ask you if you can, if you want to elaborate, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. But why, what, what were the two reasons why you were about to get fired? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people want to know. So, no, so <laughs> the first one was because their system kept breaking down and I was <laughs> offline for like almost a month oh. and a half. So it was like, how do we explain you being offline for a month and a half? Y'all give me broken material. So that's what happened. <laughs> um, and then the other time was just basically my my all my PTO and everything started to come to an end. It was like, you want you about out of your your service time that you can use. So I was like, okay, I gotta find another way. So right. hey, hey doc, can I get an FMLA claim, please? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Companies like really like like snub that that whole thing and for people people don't know that you have all that mental health and all that stuff yeah and and when you use it it's like uh but 
what the what were you paying into? Like you pay into that shit. Right. Um, but uh, coming in, please share the love and please subscribe to our YouTube page because we have a lot of things on there. Great, great things going on there. Um, now, Dwayne, what do, what you do is more than just decorating for a party. You take spaces for events and flip them to bring an experience by turning it into a production. This isn't something that anyone who doesn't have the gift for detail can necessarily do. When did you know you had the skill and when did you realize that is what you wanted to do? When did I realize I had the skill and what I wanted to do this for sure? Yeah, like, um, <clears throat> and then you like organize things and oh, like, oh, no, I was very much so a um, artistic kid. Like I love drawing and doing those things. So I was always into um, drawing houses, gowns, anything. Pageantry was always a part of my life in some sense. I've Come always on, great felt gowns. Great, <laughs> great gowns. <laughs> gowns. <dresses. laughs> I love that aspect of pageantry. And so from there, my um, God family, they started an event planning business in Florida. And so as a kid, I worked their business with them. Like I was the banquet manager. I was helping with catering. I was helping with setting up and decor. Um, and I just found like, this is something I like doing. I really do like this space. And so I went to college and I found a mentor who worked in elaborate events and she mentored me over the years and helped me to see the behind the scenes aspect of everything from the planning to the execution and like really being there. And from that point, I was like, I really love doing this. And in the space of me saying like, I want to do this on my own or full time, it wasn't until I moved to Charlotte that I was like, I think I can do this. I believe that I can do something. And like I said, knowing people and having those opportunities, my first client booked me for th her first three events, baby shower wedding and baby shower back to back. Oh. And so like, I've never had any other client prior to her. Like she was my first three clients. My first three events were all hers. So like that level of trust and love and relationship building that we do, that showed me that I have the skill set to do it and the passion behind it because you wouldn't just come back to somebody for three different events in your lifetime. Plus, you're the probably the reason she got pregnant again. I mean, if you think of it. <laughs> I listen, I well, I said that. You, were, you were probably on her mind somewhere while this was happening. I am not there. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Dwayne, when clients contact Sullivan Event Productions, what can they expect from you at, um, as you bring their vision to life? And when clients are painting a picture of what they want um, for their event to be like, what is the creative process like for you? Yeah, the first thing you're going to expect from me, any client, is that we're going to build a relationship. Like, my, my brand, my company is solely based upon connection. Like, I love people. Um, and I love to build a connection to where like, I want to know everything about you as much as I can so that it helps me understand the method behind your madness and to be able to execute the vision more properly because now I'm seeing it through your lens. So that's in key to me, like building the relationship is more important than anything else. Um, but when we get into the planning session, you can give me whatever you want on this platter, but know that it's going to be flipped, twisted. And thrown back and then brought back to you in a whole different aspect. Come on, flip like and twist. I am, I am the my mental process is more so of like you give me black and white as your theme. Okay, cool. That's your color scheme. We cool with that. Yeah, but we're gonna bring in a little silver. We're gonna bring in a little gray. We're gonna bring in a little uh, fuchsia, maybe a little pop of color somewhere. Like we're gonna add aspects and detail that make your event pop a little bit more than what you even thought about from the beginning. I don't play with just the simple black and white or whatever color scheme you give me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play with multiple colors in that palette that's going to help to elevate the event to a different space. Um, your, your mind is going to look at it like, oh, I don't see my color scheme. But then you pull back and you're like, no, it's here. It's different shades. It's, it's different variations of things. It's it's different highlights of places and things that you wanted in there. Like my one of my, my biggest one of my closest of friends events I did recently was a sneaker ball. Um, and she's on here. Hey Kelly, um, <laughs> um, she Hi, gave Kelly. me the vision like, hey, my wife, I'm going to do her for this sneaker ball. I'm like, okay, cool. 
And we found the venue and everything. And like, I went to work mentally, like, how can I elevate this event over and over again? We did custom dance floor. We did a custom cutout of an actual tennis shoe that looks like a number, like the J, the one J. Oh my God. It was so dope. Um, and it had actual laces. Like it wasn't just like a wall cutout. It was actual laces in intricate design surrounded by balloons and a custom logo just for their event imprinted everywhere between the pillows to the invitations like branding is very important to me so i want to make sure the theme sees everywhere you go your your guests are going to say i've seen this logo i know exactly where i'm at i know exactly what event i was at when i seen this right. this is that party um and so that's what we do we elevate okay right. and take who, the theme and elevate when you do the extra stuff who's paying for that because you have a surprise at the end like <laughs> because yeah, i know their invoice <laughs> listen the price is the price that's my friend <laughs> <Let me say. laughs> um no but I, I i love to throw in elements that help um execute my mental process as well there's things that i see in a client's event that i say if we added this to it it will give it that extra oomph that really tweaks it so people are like oh wait a minute this is different and so when i have those moments outside of our previous conversations <laughs> i definitely add those in as specialty moments for my clients being Kel said i paid but it was worth it yeah <laughs> in the end like once you see how great it is you're kind of like okay well here's the card <laughs> but um I mean, you kind of talked about it, um, but I want to kind of go a different route with this question. It's been said that oftentimes when you're an entrepreneur, that your family and friends aren't always going to be the first to support you. Um, now, you've talked about that and that they are the people who. Um, but let's say, have you been surprised about maybe who didn't that you thought maybe? And how's that as an entrepreneur? How's that? How does that mentally you deal with that? Yeah, uh, Dwayne, you ain't got to say no name. I'm not saying no, no name. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I've had moments where the initial shock of everything hit. And from the initial aspect of I'm losing my job and I'm going to go full time in my business, well, what are you going to do? I just told you I'm going full time in my business. Mm. Like, that's my job. Like, that's where my income is coming from next. Um, so those are the moments that I've had with several people. Mm -hmm. Um, and still today, I, I've have a person that I, I will call and be like, Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Good. You found a job yet? No, I'm running my business. I told wow. you this. Um, but that, what, what does that do to your, like, cause, cause for me, like, you know, having my own, my thing, it's just like, I would be like, okay, I don't think I need you around me per se. Like I can understand that. I think for me, the the the, the space that these individuals are, um, they're older, so they don't see or understand the whole logic of, I guess, owning mm -hmm. your own business. That wasn't something that was in their space, right. um, something that they knew or understood fully what that looked like. And right. so for me, it was more so of being in a space where I can say, "Hey, this is different. It's a different time. People actually make a fine living working for themselves." Um, and I know you know what I do, and I know you've seen the pictures I've sent you and the videos, and you always tell me I did a great job. So I know that you understand it. It's more so of like, how do I internalize the understanding of you not working for a corporation or a company, and you have a steady paycheck coming in? And I think that's so, where it is. Like, what's your livelihood looking like now? Those people, they they watch TV, and they'll watch like a program about someone doing this kind of thing. And they'd be like, oh, my God, look at this. But then when it comes to you, it's kind of like, oh, did you do anything yet? It's like, you know, unless they see you on TV, it's like kind of like you're not doing anything. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. It's one of those. I mean, but I think that was one of the biggest challenges at the beginning. But now, because a lot of my friends, um, the community that I built here in Charlotte right. um, and my best friends who are across the nation, they really poured into me. My godparents have poured into it. Like we've awesome. talked about it. We've prayed about it. Like they've really been in the grind with me. Um, daily checking in. Hey, how are you doing with this? I have a friend who I was with today. It's like, hey, you made sure all the bank accounts set up. You made sure the back end, all the stuff is working properly. Is your website completed? All these things. Like they've been checking me off the list of like, 
this is what needs to be done to fulfill this destiny of your business. That's perfect. That's beautiful. Yeah. And keep doing that, y'all. Keep and do, and yes. y'all, do it for people in your family. If you're listening to this and parting it and all that, do it for other people too, you know, because we we're all in this together, you know. Agreed. Facts. Well, <clears throat> Dwayne, what would you say to someone who is an entrepreneur? entrepreneur and afraid to step out on faith by leaving the security of a nine to five to invest their full time in making their dreams come true. Trust the process um, and really pray. And I, I don't know about everybody else, but I had to fast through this process. Um, after I lost the job and uh, well, they, they, they let me go and just say that it was what it was. Um, it was a trying time. Like that mental process from like knowing I had a paycheck coming in following week to not knowing I have a paycheck no more. That was a process in, uh, in mentally pro- a mental process to where I broke down several times, um, mm-hmm. being transparent. Like it wasn't an easy, this past, this past month has not been easy for me. Um, I've cried, I've prayed, I've cried, I've called my friends. They've cried with me. They prayed, they pushed me off the phone, like get up and get out the house, do something. Um, you know, figure this out. But I would definitely say the end of the day, trust yourself, get rid of the imposter syndrome. And if you know you have the gift to do what you're doing, pursue it. Right. Because at the end of the day, your passion will only lead you to what you're destined to have. Especially if it's it's not about the money for me. It's about building people, building clientele, building relationships with individuals who really take on what I give and become a part of my family. So, like I said, my friends have been my 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 businesses, uh, my business patrons. So, at the end of the day, I'm doing it for them. I'm continuing to build upon that. I'm building my network. I'm building my relationships, my family, my circle of individuals, and that continues to bring money into my business. So, well, I do want to um, just so people know because we're talking about this, and I feel like you know sometimes we don't know those kind of terms. Um, imposter syndrome is a condition of feeling anxious, not experiencing success internally, despite being high performing in external objective ways. This condition often results in people feeling like a fraud or a phony and doubting their abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, I want people out there to know that and know that people who are entrepreneurs like Dwayne, that they sometimes need that little push. You know, a little push can go a very long way, you know. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's. Just- Difficult to get past. It's not easy. I would I would tell you every event that I've had to this date, I still deal with a little bit of imposter. Like, am I built for this? Am I capable of pull, pulling this off? Is this something that are my clients going to be satisfied with what I'm doing? Like, am I supposed to be in this space? And it, the que- the answer is always yes. At the end of the day, when you step back from everything that you just put out there, you step back and you say, yes, this is it. Everybody's satisfied. People are looking around. They're having a good time. Your team is looking at you like we did it, like we here, like just trusting yourself. I think that's the biggest aspect of it, like trust in thyself that you know what you're doing. Right. Um, what's your goal and vision for Sullivan Event Productions, and where do you see yourself and the company in five years? I see us doing bigger and better things every time, um, elevating our um inventory elevating our event design elevating our client personnel their division their visions um and their aspects of what their events look like um our goal and mission is always to build healthy relationships with clients that allow for continuous growth not only within our business but in our personal relationships with each other so it, like i said it's always been the core of my company um you know people have said at the launch on the video you know one of my clients said you handle people well and i feel like when you treat people right people will continue to come back to you and that's been the blessing that i've had the opportunity to have and i'll continue to do that each and every time because i want to build those relationships that continue to allow for you to say oh that's my go-to person like yeah. i want i want to be a household name to where in this family we only book Dwayne and sullivan co events that's it like we, we don't book yeah. nobody else you're going to be doing the wedding. You're doing the sweet 16. You know, you're doing the birthday parties. Like, you're doing everything. Hey, I, if you need me to do the repass, I'll do the repass, too. I will do it all. Like, whatever. Hey, you got let's to. go for it. <laughs> but that's the relationships that I want to build to where my clients are like, oh, that's a standard part of the family. Oh, come over to the barbecue. Come over to the cookout. You right. know, come hang out with us. Right? But know that 
when I have an event, you're my go-to person. I'm not calling nobody else. Like people call David Tutera. I didn't call Dwayne Sullivan. Call me. I got you. Exactly. Um, and now when you talk about like inventory and stuff like that, um, and building that up, what, what's that look like for you? Do you, do you want people to like maybe sometimes donate things? Like, cause I know about that, like the props, having props, like, um, I'm very much into collecting. Yeah. I'm just I'm, like I'll sometimes I'll see something. I'm like, damn, I wish I had a truck right now. <laughs> How's that for you? Listen, I, I am a hoarder at heart. <laughs> I, I, if I see something that could be used, right. event, I am going to buy it and put it up somewhere and be like, oh, I might be able to use that later on. Like, right. I have stuff from my 40th birthday party in two years already in storage. Like, I'm going to pull these out yeah. in two years. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm thinking ahead, right? <laughs> Um, but a lot of the inventory is simple stuff. Like I don't, I say this all the time. I don't want a lot of inventory, but yet I pick up all these pieces. Um, but I like to make sure that my clients have customizable opportunities for their events. Everything that they want or their desires, but it's unique to them mm -hmm. is what I desire for most of my clients. So when I say inventory, I'm thinking about like candle votives, um, you know, backdrop stands, different things of that nature, some linen, Possibly for my smaller events, if someone have to rent those, and you just, you know, you pay for a rental through our company versus going to an actual bigger rental facility. Um, so I want to have a smaller pieces in my inventory so that my clients don't feel like they're getting knocked over the head by everybody right. to get what they need. That's smart. Yeah. Um, y'all make sure y'all subscribe to our, to watch this interview again on our our YouTube, and make sure you follow Dwayne, please. Dwayne, I want to ask you kind of a fun question. Okay. Um, if you, you could do an event for any celebrity, who would it be and why? Nobody. I don't. Nobody? I, I don't want Wait. it. I don't. Oh, why not? I, <laughs> I am the... Here's listen, <laughs> I, listen, I don't... I've been of the sound impression of myself. I have mentors who are celebrity event planners and things <laughs> of that nature. I don't no. want that. That's not my lane. Okay. I don't... It's, it's not the vision that I have for my business. If it happens to fall in my lap, it's mm -hmm. cool, but I don't, I don't want it. Like, okay. I like everyday people that I can connect with. You ain't looking for a bargain from me because, let's be real, a lot of these celebrities, they're not all paying. Some of them are looking for a, a bartering system. Where? So let's be are honest. You, you, talking you, about you do a little for me, I'll do a little for you. Don't bring up Sheree Whitfield in this conversation. Hey, listen, I'm not bringing nobody <laughs> I ain't said no names. I ain't said nothing. I'm speaking of what I know of in the industry. I, I'm not one of, I, if, if we cool, like you my people, like you got an event business or something going on, I can borrow with you. But on the higher end, like your celebrity status can do but so much for me. Let's be true. Let's be honest. So I don't have an event for anybody that I would want to do for, um, I'm sorry, I couldn't answer that question any other way. No, 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 no. it was honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now that you've stepped into the next chapter in your life and your business, um, and you kind of touched on it, but what's next for Dwayne Sullivan um, and Sullivan Events Productions? Man, what is next for us? Um, we have a couple of books, uh, items on the books already for next year. Mm -hmm. So I'm blessed and thankful for that. Um, so we're going into 2024 rolling, but our calendar is still open. So let us know how we can be of a, uh, a service to you. Um, but just continuing to grow each and every event that we have. Um, my team continues to work behind the scenes to come up with different creative processes and get things in place that we need to ensure that our services are effective. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not going through the rigmarole of a whole bunch of hoops and loops to try to get in contact with us or even just to communicate with us in any way. So that's the biggest part of our business is making sure that our foundation is steady continuously and that we're continually building relationships. If y'all got questions for Dwayne, please type them into the chat. Uh, yes. Dwayne, I want to thank you so much for uh, coming through to talk with us. It was such a pleasure. Um, can you tell us how people can reach you, um, anything that people can do to help uh, keep your business going in the right direction? Definitely, man. First and foremost, thank you guys so much for having me on. I really appreciate this. The Pink Clubhouse has been phenomenal in support of uh, Sullivan & Co. I thank y'all so much for this platform today. Um, but again, on socials, everything is Sullivan Co. events. Um, and because I knew this was happening and I didn't do it at my launch, 
I am announcing today our website is actually live okay. Come on. at this oh, moment. Man. So if you go to our website, which is SullivanCoEvents.com, let's check it out. You will see our full website. It is live right now. If you hit the subscribe at the bottom and put your email information in, if you book within the first six months of that subscription, I'm giving you 15% off of your uh, event. So, hey, let us know how we can be of a service to you. Oh, it, oh it's, yeah. it's here. It's, congratulations, yeah. sir. That is amazing. It's not yes. um, like she bought your A. It's actually <laughs> it's the shade of Sherry for me. I'm just saying. <laughs> we, we're not doing summer. It's not spring, summer. It's, it's given right now. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and it looks no, but great, by the way. It does look amazing. Congratulations. I, I'm so yeah. happy for you and so proud of you. Oh. Super dope. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank I like this, you. Um, I like this bank thing that y'all did for Nick and Techia. Oh, yeah. That's oh. one of my. And see, again, that she hired me at that Fortune 500 company. Mm. And when she got married she said i'm gonna use you because i believed in you all these years doing events on the side from working with us i'm gonna hire you to do my wedding and that she it came true and i was honored after what 10 years of, of working with her that she really felt came through on her promise and hired me to do her event so yeah that's beautiful 